So now let's take a look at this idea of a simple random sample. And to do this, we have a couple different definitions that we have to go through. And we're going to talk about how we obtain one of these samples via our calculator. All right. So first off, what's our definition? <laughs> Notice this one here will sound a little bit confusing at first. A simple random sample is when a sample is taken in such a way that every possible sample of size n has an equal chance of being chosen from the population. Okay. I mean... Reading that is like, <laughs> that's so incredibly dense. It's really hard to get a grip on like what that's actually meaning. I really want to focus in though here on one kind of key idea. The key idea here in our simple random sample is that we want to make sure that every individual within our population has an equal chance of being chosen. So if there were 10 people in the population, I would want each person to have a 1 out of 10 chance of being picked, assuming I was doing a sample of one person. So let's talk more so about how do we in ensure this? How do we make sure that everybody in the sample has the equal chance of being selected? Well, to do this, it requires first that we would actually know how many people there are in the population as a whole, and that we could ultimately kind of make a big list of them. Think of it like a like a, a roster, almost, of everybody in the population. And this is what we typically call a frame. Okay? Um, and then, in order to achieve this kind of equal chance of being selected, we're going to use random number generators from our calculator to generate a certain number of individuals that we're going to need for a sample. Okay, so again, let's talk kind of about how this works here. A frame, uh, again, is the thing that we're going to need. We're going to need a list of all the individuals within the population so we can kind of number them off. And then we'll use our calculator to tell us which of those people we're going to pick. So everybody's got a fair shot at being selected. Notice again, this is very different than the idea of a convenience sample, which is just, again, a sample that we collect without using any randomness at all. We just kind of say, I don't know, I'm going to pick uh, person one and uh, person six and uh, person uh, ten. That's convenience, even though it feels like we might be, quote unquote, randomly coming up with those particular values. Okay, so let's kind of see how this works here in a specific example. I'm going to look here at example number one as well as this description of how I obtain a random sample via our calculator. So let's take a look down here at example one. We'll see kind of how this works. All right, so management of a company, suppose here, needs to select two employees to send to an important conference. Okay, the following names have been presented as all of the possible people that could be sent. Okay, so we've got Eric and Mallory and uh, Christiane and, and Alfonso and Jared and Jana. Okay, great. So we have, we have these people. So automatically what we're generating here is a frame. That is, it's a list, and we could even start to number off all of these individuals. So I could say, like, how about we call Eric person number one, Mallory number two, and then so, so on and so forth down the list. Now, it doesn't really matter how I label them. I just need every person to kind of be associated with a specific number. And once I have this, I can talk about how we can go to the calculator to go ahead and have the calculator randomly select two of these particular names. So let's go over to our calculator here and see how this works. Okay, so I pulled my calculator up here on the left side of the screen, and let's see kind of how we can obtain the random sample now that we've identified the frame. So what I need to do here to generate my uh, numbers is I need to go ahead and uh, follow the following sequence of button pushes. First, I need to click on the math button. Now, the math button is going to be located right below your alpha button and your second button on the calculator, so up here at the left. If I click that math button, you'll see that it brings up a lot of options labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, but also along the top, you'll see that there are actually different menu names. So if I hit the left or the right key, I can scroll through these different menus, and we want to go to the PRB menu. It's short uh, abbreviation for probability. And... Uh, we're actually going to go down here to option number five, which is a random int. That is a random integer or a random whole number. Okay? And when we go ahead and click enter, one of two things are going to happen. 
you'll notice here that if I click enter, it just puts this on the main home screen. And some of you might have the same thing. But some of you may have gotten uh, kind of like a new fancy menu to pop up that asks you to input like a lower value and an upper value and things like that. And that's totally fine. You should be able to kind of follow along with the same numbers that I'm inputting here. You'll see that the values that I have to put in are kind of a, a lowest and a highest number that I'm going to select between. These numbers are going to correspond to these black numbers that I wrote down here. I need to tell the calculator what are the numbers that I've used to label all of the different people. So here I'm going to say 1 is my lowest number, and then I have to offset the highest number with a comma. Now the comma button on the calculator is here right above the 7 key, so if you click on that, and then you go ahead, we would click on 6, because I have numbers 1 through 6, and I'm going to tell the calculator, give me a number somewhere from 1 to 6. Now when the calculator does this, if I hit enter, it should select a value. Okay, that's totally fine. I now have the value 6, so I could say Jana is a person that should uh, be going to this important conference. But I needed two people, so what could I do? Well, I could actually just hit enter again. I don't even have to retype this. If I ever hit enter again on the calculator, it'll just run the exact same line it ran previously. Now, in this case, it gave me 6 again. So I'm going to keep hitting enter until I get a new value. Ah, this time I got one. Now if you're following along with your own calculator, you might be thinking, wait, Kyle, I'm getting completely different numbers than you. And that's okay, because they're supposed to be random. I, what I'm doing now is almost simulating like I'm rolling a die. And if you were to roll a die and I was to roll a die, we wouldn't always expect that we get the same results. The idea is that our results were obtained randomly. So in this case, I would be able to go to this problem here and say that the two people that should be selected would be Eric and Jana. So now with the calculator put away, I can go ahead and say that uh, since our calculator produced one and six, we will send Eric and Jana to the conference. Now again, your answer might look very different based on the values that your calculator gave you. So one of the most important things that you would want to make sure that you're able to demonstrate or include when you actually, say, do a problem like this on a homework or on an exam, is you would want to be able to write down the command that you used in the calculator. So like here, I'm just going to quickly go ahead and jot down that we used a rand int with a 1 and a 6. So this is indicating, Kyle, this is what I typed into the calculator, and then our calculator produced these values, and therefore here's my conclusion. So this is the idea of how we would create a random or a simple random sample. So this is kind of a, a, a strange process uh, in that and kind of a difficult process too, because it requires that we already know all of the people and have a list of them. And sometimes that'll be perfectly feasible, but other times it might not be. And this is why in the videos to come, we'll talk about some other random sampling techniques and uh, see kind of how these might be sometimes a little bit more or less efficient.